Hello everyone, Victor, the Rookie Card Specialist here on YouTube, your Rookie Card Resource. Well, today I want to share with you a short segment of video on my appearance on Pepino Man's channel. On July 20th, 2021, I had the opportunity to be on there with Caesar. We went live for about an hour and we talked about a wide variety of topics pertaining to the Rookie Card, more specifically, or at least the segment that I'm going to show you here in just a moment, 1980s baseball rookies. I, I love this part because it's my favorite era of collecting and it appears to be Caesars as well. So we really took a dive into the 1980s and I wanted to share with you this segment because I found it very entertaining anyways. And I'm also going to share with you uh, my story about Pepino Man and how I come to find Pepino and some things that Pepino has taught me over time. Uh, so if you want to see this video in its entirety, I'm leaving a link to that video in the description down below. Please feel free to check it out. Please feel free to subscribe to Pepino if you haven't yet already. With that said, let's, lock, let's talk about 1980s baseball rookies. I hope you enjoy. So with me, because I, I grew up in the 80s collecting cards. Mm -hmm. Let's just say anything like a Kirby Puckett, a Roger Clemens. I was into tops. So to me, the 85 tops Clemens, the Kirby Puckett, in my heart, those are rookie cards. But you had the Fleer update a year prior. So in that case, what will be your definition? Well. Yeah, and that topic with with the traded cards and Beckett giving the XRC identifier, that actually, all of that really started in 83 with Daryl Strawberry and all them. Yeah. Uh, it it kind of carried over into 84, and then 84 is when we had a big blow up about it. But uh, yeah, uh, Fleer decided to create cards of Clemens, Puckett. Uh, who else is in there? Uh, Dwight Gooden? Yeah, it went, and they put it in the 84 Fleer update. <clears throat> and then in 85, when all the card manufacturers created cards for those guys, Beckett called those 85s, the, uh, gave it the RC identifier, and a lot of collectors um, had a lot of disagreement with that because they're saying the first card released was the Fleer update, so this is the real rookie card. And, and then another part of the hobby was saying, no, 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 it's the 85. The 85 is the, is the real rookie. So Beckett was trying to bring clarity, and he gave it a, um, or Beckett Publications and their team gave it the XRC identifier to signify that that's an extended rookie card, meaning that these are cards that were distributed in those little box sets 132 card box sets and and they are really an extension of the regular set and and uh and that's the true definition of that xrc i know a lot of people are mistaken thinking that that just means like an extra rookie card but that's not what that means it actually means that it's an extended rookie card it comes from the extended set and so that's what they did and that caused the north a lot of people disagreed with that with what Beckett did there, um, but Beckett uh, stood their ground and they and they started identifying them as that. Well, this continued in '86 and '87 with Barry Bonds and all of them, and and so again they give the '86 as an XRC, but it caused a big uproar within the hobby. And by 1988, Beckett Publications says, you know what, we're just going to stop using this, this XRC thing. <laughs> We're going to stop using the XRC identifier, but we're going to uh, grandfather in the ones that we've already done. And that's what they did. See, I mean, like I said, I was big and this is why I kind of wanted to have you on because I still go by what I learned in the 80s. Right. You know, I agree with everything that you say, like right now modern cards this is what should be considered a rookie card like you shouldn't have a thousand rookie cards like right. you just shouldn't you should have one for each manufacturer so uh that's kind of the way i see it uh 
But I always agree with everything that rules that you say is like, oh, I agree with him 100%. I always tell myself, but I have my own definition just because yeah. I'm going by the way I learn. But if you were to tell me I'm wrong, I will agree with you. Oh, I know I'm wrong, but this is just how I do it. Sure. You know what I mean? And I don't, see, I don't see anything wrong. I don't see anything wrong with having those little um, differences as long as it's known. Right. You know what I mean? So right. if I'm trying to make a deal with you, I'm not calling a rookie card. I'm not calling something I have a rookie card that I'm trying to sell you that I know you don't consider a rookie card. You know, we always right. got to make because, I mean, I, I kind of have that thing where, to me, Daryl Strawberry's rookie card is the 83 tops, all right? Even though it's kind of really not. But then I'll consider his 83 Donruss, I mean, his 84 Donruss and his 84 Fleer, his Donruss and Fleer rookie card. You know what I mean? Like, that's their brand's rookie card. They missed out on 83, you know, because I think they didn't have the update, right? Until 84, Fleer came out with the update, I mean, and they hit it out the park. They got lucky. I mean, they hit, you know, they got all the major prospects in that one. Yeah. See, so uh, uh, so now, see, that's the difference, is that those back then, those were box sets, right? Mm -hmm. So now. And they were distributed only to hobby shops, which was another um, industry standard back then, a hobby standard, I should say, was that rookie cards need to be distributed in pack form and distributed nationally. Yeah, I mean, it, it's something that should be so simple, right? You would think, yeah, you would think. Yeah, I mean, so now we'll get to, uh, like I said, I'm big time into the 80s. I have, I mean, most of my knowledge is the 80s card. But so, Mark McGuire. Mm, big one. Um, yeah, big you one. know. That's not something that was planned. That's just kind of, they had the Olympic cards. And one of the guys of the cards they made, because if I recall, Will Clark was also on the team, but he didn't have a card, right? Right. Uh, so they they hit big with the Mark McGuire card because nobody cared about the Mark McGuire card in 85, 86, you know, 87 when he came in. And then when he hit his home runs and, Hey, he has an 85, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So, so by definition, that's not his rookie card, right? On paper definition, as far as the regulations go. Right. And but everybody a, called that his rookie card because it was the tops card and it was official. Yeah, and there was a big debate in 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 that aspect to where now, you know, um, uh, talking to Dr. James Beckett on this topic, you know, he was going by what the hobby wanted. And the hobby wanted the 85 tops to be the rookie card. But, you know, uh, and that's where I, I see a lot of danger in that today. If we're going to go by what the hobby wants, man, that's real subjective. And I, I don't know if that's the right thing to do. Uh, but back then, if you if you were to look at that 85 tops mark mcguire uh by the standards that were set in the day that card should have never been given the rc identifier it should have been his 87s mm -hmm. yeah and and see so that that's a tough one that's why i say it's like me just like you said it's like laws now okay say somebody that broke a law in 1980 and is in jail for it and now what he did has been deemed legal he still stays in jail <laughs> you know what i mean yeah. he doesn't come out because now well, what he did is not illegal anymore when he committed the crime it was a crime and he's still in there yeah all right well uh, uh, um that was great you know yeah. definitely hopefully uh, a lot of you guys are out there that are watch this Go fill out that survey. Yeah. Fill out that survey. Do your part in the hobby, man. Real quick, Caesar, I wanted to tell you a couple things, man. I don't know if uh, real early on when I started making videos, I made a video called 12 YouTubers that influenced me to start my channel. And and so I, I did like a little a video uh, highlighting each YouTuber, 
that I that that influenced me. You were one of those twelve YouTubers, and I went on to tell the story, and I'll, I'll tell this to your viewers. Uh, but when I first heard of Pepino Man, you know, I usually um, will put my YouTube on my phone or on my iPad, and I just start working on whatever it is I'm working on. And this dude, Pepino Man, would come on, and he would start being all loud with these. <laughs> all these trinkets and all this other stuff and and my wife or, or my kids were coming dad what are you listening to <laughs> but i would uh uh to be honest with you caesar it, it was nothing i guess personal against you because i didn't know you as a person but it was like man this dude is just too loud it's like you would get on my nerves <laughs> but check it out i started to notice uh, the the YouTube community really embraced you and, and really was loving the material that you were doing. And so one particular day I was working on something and your video came on. I just left it. I just let it play on autoplay. Well, you came on and you were telling some story. I forget what the story was really about. It was something with a chicken or something and 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 the story was intriguing the you know your content caught my attention and so i stopped what i was doing and i just started watching the video and by the end of that video man i tell you what you you at the end of the video you came out with a chicken suit on and you started <laughs> a full-blown chicken suit <laughs> bro i was laughing so hard i was literally in tears man that's how bad you had me cracking up and and I and I tell you, ever since that day, I've been a big Pepino Man fan. I mean, I, I love what you do. I love your creativity, and I just love your consistency and how you do things, man. You are, you are the hobby class clown, man. But you're top notch person, man. I, and I just, and I and I tell you, you know what, you know what? At the end of that, in my video, you know what you taught me? That it's okay to have fun on YouTube. Yeah. Yeah. It's okay to have fun on YouTube, man. This is this is this is just, you know, we're here to just have a good time, and 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 we deal with enough responsibilities throughout the day, you know. Let let's come on YouTube and let's just have some fun, man. So I thank you for that, and uh, thanks for having me on. And uh, yeah, man, I really like what you're doing here. I really like that you're 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 really you're showing another side of Pepino that that no Pepino can when he's he can be intelligent and he can hold an interview with somebody and he, he he has some substance and he has a voice and so i love this new content that you're creating here showing a, a completely different side of caesar that that we don't get all the time so keep up the good work man all right thanks hey bumpy chill <laughs> and um that chicken up is gonna come out of uh retirement right now because i got a i got uh, i I basically I got a Pokemon card. So right away in my head to say, you know what, I'm gonna call it Pika Chicken. And I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna have Pika Chicken come out when I, I love it. The card out. So <laughs> it's, it's just Do letting it. you guys in know into the future. There you go. All right, but all right guys, everybody, thanks for watching. Check out Victor's channel, dude. Fill out the survey, everybody. Fill it out. It's your duty. All right. So thanks, Victor, for coming on, man. Thanks for the kind words. And yeah. hey, everybody, love the hobby. And keep collecting baseball cards forever, as it. The rookie card explosion box is a scam. <laughs>